The Sarah Everard case is one of the most shocking in recent British criminal history. Sarah was a smart, popular, beautiful and ambitious young woman. A marketing executive and just 33, she appeared to have a bright future in front of her. Until she met Wayne Cousins, that is. Cousins was a serving police officer on the prowl for a victim. He showed Sarah his warrant card, falsely arrested her under the pretext of having breached Covid regulations, handcuffed her, put her in his car, drove her to a remote location, raped and murdered her, and burned her corpse. The only glimmer of good news to come from this horrific case is that Cousins was swiftly arrested and sentenced to a whole life term. A real rarity in the British legal system. I'd imagine that policemen aren't terribly popular in prison, so he's in for a thoroughly miserable experience for the rest of his life. Good. But I'm not really here to talk about that case today. I'd like to discuss a couple of incidents associated with it. Philip Allott, the North Yorkshire Commissioner, spoke up to urge women to be careful and to inform them that Covid regulations were not an indictable offence. He hoped to raise awareness of the issues around the incident to prevent a possible repeat. But predictably, There were howls of outrage that he was victim-blaming, suggesting it was Sarah's fault, or claiming that women were asking for it. Something he never said, or implied. This is a pretty standard response. To twist sensible precautionary advice into gross accusations. Despite the fact that I don't think anyone has ever said women are asking to be raped. Except when feminists accuse other people of saying it. After all, if we're advised to put decent locks on our homes, to secure them when we're out, or to install alarm systems, we don't wail that we've been victim blamed, or that anyone's suggesting we're asking to be burgled because we've got a nice house. It's just an acceptance that we need to take precautions for the world we actually live in, rather than the world we'd like to live in. But Allert is now been abused and attacked. His life may never recover, and his career could be over. And he's far from alone. In the course of the investigation, Wayne Cousins' phone was seized, and it was discovered that he was in a WhatsApp group with five other officers. In this group, the men exchanged lots of bawdy humour and bad taste jokes. And the investigation was clear that they were jokes. Yet those men are now being investigated and they face the prospect of criminal charges. In fact, the only member of that group immune from the prosecution is Cousins himself. Now, let's be clear. None of these men are remotely implicated in what Cousins did. And they couldn't possibly have known that while they were larking about, he was being deadly serious. But that doesn't matter. They now face criminal charges for telling jokes in a private forum. And this should terrify us all. Because destroying the lives of these men won't bring Sarah back. And it won't protect any other women. But it does set a precedent which has alarming repercussions for all of us in our increasingly totalitarian society. This incident reminded me of the case of Paddy Jackson. Jackson was a rugby international who had been making a real reputation playing for Ireland until he was accused of rape. Now, as it happens, Jackson was acquitted, 
he was cleared of all charges. But his phone had been seized too. And the case exposed some laddish banter he had shared with a friend in another WhatsApp group. And because of that, despite walking free from court, his career was finished. And his life was destroyed. The West has slid into a vindictive, puritanical culture that is unrelentingly vicious. And it is destroying the lives of countless people for telling jokes. The consequences this has for our society are a catastrophe. We need to find reverse gear before it's too late. And we need to rediscover a bit of perspective. Outlawing dark humour will not make our society safer or better. But it will do irreparable long-term damage. And it will have consequences we can't even begin to imagine. And that shouldn't be Sarah Everard's legacy. If you've enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in these topics, I've written two books which go into them in extensive detail. They're called The Tyranny of the Left, and they're available on the links below. Please feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.